This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. More animated. Here's the thing. Dixon didn't shoot Scanlon. Scanlon was wounded when his own pen gun accidentally went off in his shirt pocket. He framed Dixon so he wouldn't get in trouble for carrying an unauthorized weapon. Don't you see? Dixon is innocent. Impossible, I exclaimed. Check out the evidence yourself, came his reply. See where it really points. I hung up the phone and dashed up the stairs to the prosecutor's office, pausing briefly to catch my breath before strolling inside. You know the Dixon case, I asked casually, not wanting to tip my hand too early. If you don't mind, I'd like to go over the details once more. Color drained from his face. Uh, I can't talk about it, he stammered. No comment. It turned out that my informant had already passed along his suspicions to the prosecutor's office. Behind the scenes, a grand jury was being convened to reconsider the evidence. Amazingly, unexpectedly, the once airtight case against James Dixon was being reopened. At the time, I started my own investigation, studying the crime scene, interviewing witnesses, talking with Dixon, and examining the physical evidence. As I thoroughly checked out the case, the strangest thing happened. All the new facts I uncovered, and yes, even the old evidence that had once pointed so convincingly toward Dixon's guilt, snugly fit the pen-gun theory. Witnesses said that before Scanlon arrived on the scene, Dixon had been pounding his gun on the door of his girlfriend's house. The gun discharged in a downward direction. In the cement of the front porch, there was a chip that was consistent with the bullet's impact. This would account for the bullet that was missing from Dixon's gun. Dixon said he didn't want to be caught with a gun, so he hid it in some grass across the street before police arrived. I found a witness who corroborated that. This explained why the gun had been found some distance from the shooting scene, even though nobody had ever seen Dixon throw it. There were powder burns concentrated inside, but not above, the left pocket of Scanlon's shirt. The bullet hole was at the bottom of the pocket. Conclusion? A weapon had somehow discharged in the pocket's interior. Contrary to statements in the police report, the bullet's trajectory had been at a downward angle. Below Scanlon's shirt pocket was a bloody rip where the bullet had exited after going through some flesh. Dixon's rap sheet hadn't told the whole story about him. Although he had spent three years in prison for an earlier shooting, the appellate court had freed him after determining that he had been wrongly convicted. It turns out that the police had concealed a key defense witness and that a prosecution witness had lied. So much for Dixon's record of violent tendencies. Finally, I put the crucial question to Dixon. If you were innocent, why in the world did you plead guilty? Dixon sighed. It was a plea deal, he said, referring to the practice in which prosecutors recommend a reduced sentence if a defendant pleads guilty and thus saves everybody the time and expense of a trial. They said if I pleaded guilty, they would sentence me to one year in prison. I'd already spent 362 days in jail waiting for my trial. All I had to do was admit I did it, and I'd go home in a few days. But if I insisted on a trial and the jury found me guilty, well, they'd throw the book at me. They'd give me 20 years for shooting a cop. It wasn't worth the gamble. I wanted to go home. And so, I said, you admitted doing something that you didn't do? Dixon nodded. That's right. In the end, Dixon was exonerated, and he later won a lawsuit against the police department. Scanlon was stripped of his medal, was indicted by a grand jury, pleaded guilty to official misconduct, and was fired from the department. As for me, my stories were splashed across the front page. Much more important, I had learned some big lessons as a young reporter. One of the most obvious lessons was that evidence can be aligned to point in more than one direction. For example, there had easily been enough proof to convict Dixon of shooting the sergeant. But the key questions were these. Had the collection of evidence really been thorough? And which explanation best fit the totality of the facts?
Once the pen gun theory was offered, it became clear that this scenario accounted for the full body of evidence in the most optimal way.